the Giants lose to the Miami Dolphins 20-9 to lower their record to 4-8. So Mike Lennon was the starting quarterback for the Giants this week as Daniel Jones sustained uh, a neck injury against the Eagles. So we were not aware of this. So, you know, when I recorded the last episode, this was this is new information. Um that came out, I think it must have been around Tuesday where this information came to light. And really, uh, it's a situation where it's hard to evaluate, further hard to evaluate Daniel Jones. But one thing that is clear is this offense is just so far gone. And Mike Lennon, he's terrible. Um, he He is absolutely abysmal Mike Lennon so but also just whether it be Jason Garrett Freddie Kitchens Joe Judge it's just this offense is stale boring vanilla I mean, the Giants have to be one of the most boring teams to watch in the NFL they have to be uh, simply put um, and so this game was just another example of that and sure you know there's some bright spots along the way I, I think certainly like on the defensive side of things, like, you know, Xavier McKinney's had a pretty good season and, you know, uh, young players like Aziz Ojolari has made an impact. He had another sack in this one. Uh, Quincy Roche, uh, the, the former Miami product, uh, Miami University, um, he gets a sack. Um, Aaron Robinson, the third round pick who came back from injury, he made some plays. He looked pretty good. So, you know, there are, I think, some young players that you can kind of hang your hat on. With that being said, I mean, uh, the, the Giants have so much to work on, so much to work on. And, and Dave Gettleman being fired is a foregone conclusion and saying that should happen a while ago. But I'm sorry, Joe Judge needs to go as well. He needs to go. Uh, and it's interesting because last year I was a big Joe Judge fan, as I think most Giant fans were. But it's gone so far the other way for me, it's not even funny. Like, He needs to be gone for many reasons. Look, and one could argue that it's not fair, but if you're going to get a new GM, which you are, and I really fucking hope that it's not an internal, you know, uh, promotion like Kevin Abrams, please don't do that. I'll be very upset if that's what it is. You know, if you go outside the organization, then you got to let that new GM hire his own head coach. You have to. Yeah. and, And sorry, Joe Judge. Uh, and maybe that decision would have been made tougher if this season had gone better, but it hasn't. And it's what he does within a game. I mean, just the timeouts that are called are just pretty fucking senseless, honestly, and don't make much sense half the time, in my opinion. He's burning timeouts for no reason. And just um, really, he, he it's so conservative. It is beyond conservative. We'll talk about that. Like in this game, like there was a fourth and two or fourth and three. I want to say fourth and two at around midfield. And they, and they punt without hesitation. I understand that Mike Lennon's your quarterback. I get all of that. But come on. Your season's basically going nowhere. Show a little bit of something. Show some guts. And go for it. Come on. Like this is such a conservative offense. And like that, some of that has to fall on Joe Judge. I'm sorry. Like some of that has to fall on him. Um, and so, yeah, like it's just not working out. And so they're four and eight now. They're very likely headed for a, a you know, even worse record, which I'm all for again. As, as I made it very clear, I've been rooting against this team for a while this season, which has been the case basically every season in recent memory. And now Mike Glennon has a concussion as well. So if he's out, if Daniel Jones does not come back from his neck injury, Jake Fromm. Yes, the Giants, uh, the old University of Georgia quarterback, Jake Fromm, who was on the Bills practice squad. I think he was technically behind, for what it's worth, I think he was behind Davis Webb, former Giant Davis Webb in the pecking order. So that, that tells you all he needs to know right there. So Jake Fromm could theoretically be, there's a world in which he might be the starting quarterback next week at the Chargers. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. So, um, just, just brutal. And, you know, and this Dolphin team, this is a team that, was one in seven and now they're on a five game winning streak. So Brian Flores, another Belichick disciple like Joe judge gets it done today. Um, and this Dolphin team, they're very similar to the giants, more defensive oriented, 
But I thought that Tua was quite all right in this one. I thought that he made the plays when he had to. Um, and they were just better than the Giants. So the Dolphins deserve to win this game. Uh, like, was it like an annihilation? No. But here's one of the biggest things. And, and I think the defense has mostly been good. But at the end of halves, the end of the first half, they've been insanely bad since game one. I believe I saw the stat that the Giants have been outscored 45-0 with under two minutes in the in the first half. Come on. Come on. And, and that speaks to Judge, Patrick Graham in that case, unfortunately. It does. It, it, it's just a lot of the same problems. Like, it, it's really, it's hard football to watch. It's hard football to watch. Like, I think even the most optimistic Giant fan, you got to pack it in for the season. I know that I started out early with rooting against them, but I think if you're thinking about this, you know, from a reasonable angle, you got to be rooting for losses for the last five games. You root, you know, for the Giants games and the Chicago Bears. And ironically, the Giants play the Bears the second last week of the season, but the Bears lost this week to the Cardinals. So we'll be talking about the Bears a little bit more. I, I feel like I haven't been talking about them enough in these episodes. It, it becomes more of a thing now. So the Giants have, I think, two picks in the top seven or so if the season ended today. So hopefully they can kind of inch their way up there a little bit. But yeah, in this game, Dolphins were just simply better. Um, and I felt like Tua, you know, did what he had to. And, and the Giants' have, 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 uh, offensive line is brutal. Like, they can't run the ball. Saquon had one big run where the offensive line did a really good job. Other than that, he was just bottled up the whole time. I mean, Saquon, it's it's so bad. It's so bad with Saquon. Like, I, I just, I want him gone. I want him gone. I, I, I don't want it anymore. I don't want to deal with it. Just let it end. I'm done with Saquon Barkley. I've been done with him. But, I mean, I don't know. It, like, you, you sign that man to... You know, a long-term extension with big money. Whew, that's a mistake. That that that's almost as big a mistake as fucking drafting in the first place, the second overall pick. Like you got to be out of your mind to do that. But this is a classic giant game, but also I guess dolphin game too, where there was no score after the first quarter. It was a fast moving. Like that's giant games. It's just like no offense at all. Uh, you know, a lot of unsuccessful runs. Not taking chances, not that many incomplete passes, um, and so like the first of note play to me uh, in this first quarter was um, Mike Lennon throwing an interception intended for Darius Slayton. And Darius Slayton, like I feel like again, he's another one of those guys similar to Daniel Jones. Darius Slayton had a very good rookie year under Pat Shermer, really good, and he's regressed ever since. Um, but Glennon just throws it up into double coverage and Xavier and Howard picks it off. Uh, so Miami has the ball at their own three at this point. Um, and before that, it seemed like Kenny Galladay was going to get involved in a major way. But he had a rib injury. I think he hurt his ribs. He would return, but he like was basically nowhere to be found from there. That's unfortunate. Because Galladay, again, he's got talent, but he's very injury prone. And it's just that's another situation that just hasn't worked itself out. Keep in mind also, Adoree Jackson was out of this game. Still no Kadarius Tony. Still no Sterling Shepard, among others. Um, O'Shane Zimenez was a healthy scratch. I mean, total bum. O'Shane Zimenez, total bum that's hopefully off this team next year. So, you know, Glennon throws that interception. But then Miami goes three and out. So the Giants get great field position um, as they start at the Miami 37. So it's hard to fuck that up. And again, Galladay getting involved at this point. And the Giants would settle for a 39-yard Graham Gano field goal because that's what they do. They settle for field goals. Miami, you know, again, the defense, oh, wait, the defense, like, just got points scored for them? Okay, we're going to, that's fine. And maybe I'm being a little bit too hard, I'll admit, but now we're going to give up points because now they had a 3 nothing lead the Giants, so there you go. Um, and really, you know, Devontae Parker gets involved in this drive a little bit. Jalen Waddle was good all game. Um, and, and it's a 48 yard field goal for Jason Sanders ties it up. And then, and, and at this point, like the giants punt on the next drive, you got three, what do you have? You have, sorry, four eighteen left in the half and Miami takes it down basically to the end of the half and they score a touchdown. It's a 14 play 89 yard drive in three minutes and 52 seconds. And this is where 
you know, you get a little Albert Wilson, Jalen Waddle, Mike Gesicki, Devontae Parker, just moving down the field. And second and goal at the five, it is a five yard touchdown from Tonga Valoa to Mac Hollins. Gives Miami a 10 3 lead and a half. But right there, it's like game over. Like right there, it is game over. Uh, Miami gets the ball, ball first and second half, and they do punt. And the Giants actually, what do they do? They get a field goal. It's a 10 play, 69 yard drive. Evan Ingram w- w- was involved. And Evan Ingram actually had a pretty good game. He had he had a couple of, you know, of big catches. So to be fair to him, pretty good game all considered from him. And this is the drive where Barkley had a 23 yard run, his long of the game, and Booker then a 17 yard run. But after those big runs, Miami shuts it down and Godot gets a 34 yard field goal. Then there's a lot of punts, a lot of three and outs. And eventually, what happens is in the fourth quarter, start of the fourth quarter, Miami gets the, the sort of the clinching drive. It is a seven play, 61 yard drive. And again, different sources. It's Jalen Wild for a 25 yard catch, Devontae Parker, 11 yards, Albert Wilson, 13, two are doing whatever he wants. And on third and goal at the two, and mind you, it is a 10 16 at this point. So if the Giants hold them a field goal, that's pretty big. Um, it's a two yard touchdown from. Tua to Isaiah Ford. This was a really bad... James Bradbury, I don't know what James Bradbury was doing on this play. So where he played well last week, here, I don't know what the fuck he was thinking about. Um, He leaves Ford. He leaves Ford. And so Ford is kind of in, like, right near the pylon, right towards the corner of the end zone. It makes the catch. Easy catch, touchdown, 17-6 Miami. Um, Giants go three and out. Offensive line had major struggles. Um, Miami has good field position. And, and I, I glanced over the fact earlier, again, of, of the fact that there was times in this game, game where, like I said, the Giants had, um, you know, a chance to go for it and decided not to. And I guess it was, I guess it was the first drive of the game. Fourth and three, or, or maybe it was multiple times, actually, but for, first drive of the game, fourth and three at the Miami 47, and they punt. Right, That I'm sorry. That was only one. So the other time it happened, and that was... So they also had fourth and four at their own 48. They punt. Okay, fine. And yeah, this was in the second half. So... Right, fourth and two, down 10-6, middle of the third quarter, fourth and two at the Miami 46. And what happens? Riley Dixon punts into the end zone. So that ends up being a net of 26 yards. 26-yard net. You may as well just go for it. Riley Dixon's also an awful punter. I hate to say it because he's a Syracuse guy. Awful. Terrible. I I don't know why he has a job with the Giants. But then again, they don't know what they're doing, so it kind of makes sense. Um, Miami would miss a field goal. Jason Sanders misses a 52-yard field goal with 8.47 left, keeps the faint giant hopes alive. And what do the Giants do? You guessed it, field goal. They get good field position, and they turn that into three points. Uh, Graham Gano, 51-yard field goal, cuts it to 17-9. But that good old clutch giant defense, they can't even get the ball back to, you know, to give them any chance. Miami gets their, a field goal of their own. As it's a couple of key third down conversions, Devontae Parker, where James Bradbury, I don't know, he lost the ball or something. And then Mike Kosicki, uh, he gets a third down conversion, a 17 yard catch. And that sets up eventually uh, a 48 yard field for Sanders, puts them up 20 to nine. So they, and then the Giants would. Graham Gano would miss a 56 yard field with, with 14 seconds left. So Miami wins 20 to nine. Uh, so that that is now five wins in a row for the Dolphins, and the Giants are now four and eight, uh, one five on the road. So the Giants, who they where like I felt at one point was a better road team than home team, that has changed. Uh, and, and that one road win was at New Orleans in overtime. So um, for what it's worth, they don't have a regulation. You know, this is more of a hockey term, but they don't have a regulation win on the road this season, uh, and it will not get any easier against Justin Herbert at the Chargers next week, especially with the Giant quarterback situation. I mean, that should be a game where the Giants get pummeled. We'll see. But, yep. Uh, to be fair to the Giants, they've been trading wins and losses, but I feel like that's going to change. But maybe if Daniel Jones comes back healthy, 
you know, maybe there could be a win or two left in the Giants' schedule. I hope not. I honestly, if you told me they finished four and thirteen, I would be thrilled. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but again, Giants lose to the Miami Dolphins twenty to nine.